increased borrowing that um, we talked about in the past three years? And I, I say it's a good question because there are two aspects to it. One aspect is to say from 2015, oil prices dropped. What were they uh, in 2014, early 2014, 2013? They were over 100, oil price was over 100 uh, dollars per barrel. Then it dropped to 20 something. What was government supposed to do? Government still has a business to finance, yes, like you use the word obligations. You still have a government to run. You still have to provide those services that you and I expect governments to provide for us. Health, education, infrastructure, and all of that, in addition to the machinery of uh, government. Okay, so if revenues dropped that much, um, it meant if the government did, didn't increase its level of borrowing, it wouldn't be able to function. And I think the public data, if you just look at the financial data for the past four years, those are publicly available on the website of the uh, Office of the Accountant General and the Budget Office. Government's revenue actually dropped by 50%. So what was government supposed to do? So there was a gap. So the shortfall in revenue made it necessary for the level of borrowing to be higher than it was before. And let me quickly say, in all those years that uh, oil prices were high and we were producing two million barrels per day, we still borrowed. Did you see the data I provided on budget deficit going back to 2000? We were still borrowing even when oil prices were very high. So the question we should be asking, so what did we do with those oil revenues as well as the borrowing? Where, where are the roads? Where are the things we did with it? Where are the schools? Where are the hospitals? Okay, so uh, borrowing to finance the deficit didn't just start with this administration. Check the data. Check the source of the data you would see. Okay, so first thing is revenues dropped. There was a shortfall that was to be met. But then we then entered into a recession. Have you seen a government that goes into a recession, a country and the government does nothing? We saw what happened during the global financial meltdown. What did those countries do? The US, the UK, they borrowed to stimulate their economies and bring them out of recession. Until now, they are still tracking. Some of them have refused to increase interest rates because they haven't seen the targets they were looking at since that time. So government has a role to support growth and development and that includes employment. Thank you. So that explains the reason for uh, the increased borrowing. But the other increase, which we tend not to forget, is the Naira was devalued. Are we, we are aware of that, right? Mm -hmm. So for the old, the external debt stock, even if we didn't do any new sure. borrowing, if all you did was present your public debt figures in Naira, the external debt stock that you were carrying would have doubled, isn't it? We went from 155 to 107. And then to 305. So that also had an effect. So some of the analysis we do is to hold that portfolio constant and say this is the incremental arising from just exchange rate difference. Hmm? So let's keep uh, that in mind. And we came out of recession, so it worked. And we're seeing more releases for capital projects. Is that correct? Yes. At least for 2017, the government has announced that it spent a uh, release about 1.5 uh, uh, trillion for capital. So we are better off from, than where we are coming to, just looking at the figures, okay? And um, let me answer the